Welcome to Rudy Abbott Field, Jim K Stadium. Matchup between two in-state opponents here today. I can't think there were any cops in the Second of season meetings on the year between Jacksonville State and the Tigers of Auburn. Those of you joining us on ESPN Plus, we welcome you to tonight's broadcast. You're getting the uh, radio audio of tonight's game. As part of the ESPN Plus coverage this evening, I'm Mike Paris. Craig Cameron produces our radio broadcast in our network studios. And we got an outstanding crew. We'll tell you about them providing you the pictures of tonight's contest. Gamecocks beat the Tigers back on March 29th by a score of 5-2. to two. Tigers come in tonight having won six in a row, their first sweep in SEC play in a few years when they took out South Carolina. Those other Gamecocks, they swept them over the weekend. And their order... Similar to what it was back on March 29th, Deshera is just, just having a phenomenal year at the plate for them. Hitting 447 is the Auburn first baseman, the transfer from Sanford. And Howell's been good so far this year as well for the Tigers. Butch Thompson is eighth year as their head coach. Tigers at 29 and 12 coming in, ranked number 19 in the country. Tanner Jones, who has been a weekend starter, did not start this past weekend, came out of the bullpen for Jacksonville State that just finished series yesterday against Lipscomb University. He'll get to the call tonight. At most, Jones will throw two innings. This is like a bullpen session for him, but just in a starting capacity tonight. Freshman out of Thorsby High School, Tanner Jones, two wins, three losses, and a 5-3-6 ERA for him. 11 appearances, all but one of those as a starter. This past Saturday, first time he'd come out of the bullpen in his career. The true freshman's worked 42 innings, allowed 49 hits, 26 runs, 25 of them earned. He has struck out 34, walked 18 opponents, hitting 299 against him. He was terrific over the weekend in the uh, uh, Saturday game in that series, and a sun play with Lipscomb. We're ready to go here, and to stand in to lead it off will be Blake Rambush, the Tigers' third baseman. He is a transfer from Grayson College, Austin, Texas native, first pitch of the night. Fastball at 85 on the inside corner, strike call. Nothing at one to count. Mr. Jones, six feet, 190, true freshman. The 0-1 pitch, breaking ball is outside. One ball, one strike to kill. Carson Crows in right, T.J. Reeves in center. Mason Mainers in left field for Jacksonville State. We'll set the infield after the 1-1 pitch. Line foul out of play to the right. A ball, two strikes to count. Rambush on March 29th against Jacksonville State. One for four with a run scored and a walk in the game in that Gamecock 5-2 win. Or Jacksonville State, Alex Stranchin at first, Cole Frederick at second, Cody Putnam's at third. The shortstop is Isaac Alexander, Alex Carrignan, who knocked that pitch down, is behind the plate, catching in Jones on the hill. Breaking ball was outside. We're even at two balls, two strikes. Shadows at home plate. Everybody else is except Stranchin at first base in the sunshine. And a 2-2 pitch, line to left field. Cason Howell, a base hit for the Tigers. So he got it out of the way in a hurry here. Excuse me, I'm sorry, Rambush with a base hit. Blake Rambush now has reached, stra- uh, reached base safely in 40 consecutive games with that base hit for the Tigers. So it didn't take him long to take care of that mark. Here is Cason Howell at the plate. Tigers center fielder, right-handed hitter. Howell, he's from Argyle, Texas, the senior outfielder. Stands in at the plate for the Tigers at 315. Couple of homers, 26 runs batted in. Auburn, a 296 team batting average coming into tonight's game. First pitch, fastball at 93. Strike called. He was 92 to 96 Saturday in the first inning of work was Jones. He got a save out of the bullpen, went four innings coming out of the pen. In the game. Yes. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Gifts galore here. Well, I shouldn't say galore, but gifts in the press box. Thank you. Nothing in one to count. Going to a long pause after he comes set. And the pitch strike called on the inside corner. Nothing in two the count. Gabe Gross coaching the third for the Tigers. Former quarterback and baseball player, of course, for Auburn. And spent some time in the big leagues as well, did Mr. Gross. Nothing at two. The count on Howell. Rambush leads away at first. The pitch just off the corner. Just outside. Nicholas Catcher is our home plate umpire. Douglas finds the first base umpire. Matthew Wilbanks, third base umpire. One ball, two strikes to count. Howell. 
is tied for the second most strikeouts as the throw goes to first. He has struck out 31 times. Cole Foster has struck out the most on the squad. Howell, Ware, and LaRue all have struck out 31 right behind him on the season. One ball, two strikes, a count, another throw to first. Back in safely is Rambush. He is their team leader. 11 stolen bases and 16 attempts for Rambush. As a team, Auburn 33 of 43 in the stolen base category. One two pitch hit right off the end of the bat, foul first base side. Jones, for a moment, was the only person that reacted. Powell didn't get out of the batter's box real quick and scratching off the bag at first. Didn't move initially as well. Home plate is in the shadows as is first base. Everybody else is in the sun, but it's especially bad and tough at shortstop, third base, and left field. It can be brutal at those three spots this time of the day here as they look up into the sun. One and two the count. Jones ready to go to work. True freshman. Runner leads at first base. He pauses now, deals. Fastball at 90. Foul back to the screen. Our dimensions here at the ballpark. Down the lines to the Chick-fil-A foul poles. 3.30 down the line and left. 3.35 down the line and right. To the power alleys, 3.75 to left center. It is 3.80 to right center and 4.03 to straightaway center field. I don't know why we couldn't make it 400 or 4.05. We just went in the middle, 4.03. One ball, two strikes to Kim. Another Jones pitch. Did he go around? And I don't know what they will uh, figure out what they've called here, but they've got Rambush hung up in a rundown between first and second, and Alexander will run him down and tag him out. And I don't know if Howell went around or not. They asked for help. And the first base umpire said that Howell did not go around. So the out is on Rambush. That's Kerrigan got him hung up there. So it'll go two, two to four, to three to six. On the put out there is he gets thrown out, got caught in a run down, did Rambush for the first out, and the count is 2-2 two -two on Howell. And he hits it hard on the ground right side. Frederick to his left, fields and throws, two down. Ball was hit well, but right at Cole Frederick. Had to move one step to get it, two down. I don't know how just sort of stutter stepped on that previous play when he got caught in the run down. I don't know what happened there. So two outs, and here's DeShera. He's a transfer from Samford to their program, a Birmingham product. Actually, I should say Hoover. And he's played travel ball with a bunch of the Gamecocks and a bunch of the Tigers as well. Everybody seems to know him, except me, I think. Well, he's been terrific for Auburn. 447 as he takes a first pitch strike. He's hitting 447. 55 hits, 27 of those are extra base hits. Check swing foul. Watch out, Evan Bush. Gamecock assistant coach had to get out of the way there in the corner of the dugout. It's nothing at two. DeShera has 12 homers and 15 doubles, 27. Half of his hits, basically, are extra base hits on the season. He leads them in doubles. He leads them in homers and runs batted in. Total basis slugging percentage. He's walked 42 times as well. 0-2 pitch here. Fastball at 93. Above the letters, he laid off of it. One ball, two strikes a count. And this is another stat that's crazy to me. His own base percentage, it's an unbelievable 595. And here we are, three-fourths of the way through the season, a 595 on base percentage for Sonny DeShera. Transfer from Hoover, 6'1", 260-pounder. One-two pitch. That bounces up there. Outside on the breaking ball. The shift is on for him. Three infielders to the left side of the bag at second, but T.J. Reeves, the Gamecock center fielders, a couple of steps from in center field toward right center. 2-2 two -two pitch. Ass ball ran it high and inside. So he's run it full. He was ahead at two strikes. Obviously, with 42 walks, he's got a good eye at the play, too, to, to Shara. Started his career at Sanford and then transferred. Down to Auburn. Took a shot the other way, hitting against the shift that time. Or hitting away from the shift, I should say, and fouled it out of play.
Two to the kill. The wind, the pitch. Pass ball missed. So he lost him. Here, talking to the home plate umpire, I think about something as he headed to first. And Alex Stratton probably know each other. A little conversation going on at first base right now. Two out walk, and he's aboard at first base. Here is Brooks Carlson, another Sanford transfer. Carlson from down in Mobile, 5'11", 192-pounder. He's a graduate transfer to their program. First pitch breaking ball. Kicks away from Kerrigan downstairs in the turf and bounces to his left, but not far enough for the share to try to advance to second. Carl Nottemaker is the first base coach for the Tigers. Chatting with the Shara there after that first pitch. Of all the count, Carlson on the air as he hits this one on the ground, right side into right field, a base hit. The Shara will stop at second base. Carlson at 302. Just bumped it up some with a base hit. So after two outs, a walk, and now a single for the Tigers. Number 16, Second hit of the inning. Two on with two outs for Cam Hill. Hill on the year at 308, no homers, but he does have 15 runs batted in for the Tigers. Left handed hitter. So pitches for them. He's from up the Huntsville area out of Madison with the Bob Jones High School. A little big guy, 6'5, by 215. The pitch to him. Swung and missed at that one. Fastball at 92, had some movement. Jones, this 22nd pitch, I'm not sure if he'll one inning may be all we see him tonight, or he might pitch into the second. We'll just see what Jim Cash decides to do. Obviously, this is just a tune-up for the weekend for him. Pitch is outside, a ball to strike the count, fastball at 90. He has not been as swift tonight as he was Saturday. One ball, one strike, two outs. Left-handed hitter, open stance at the plate, and that back foot as far as he can go in the back of the batter's box. A 1-1 offering. Fastball at the knees, inside corner. One ball, two strikes to count on him now. All turf here at Rudy Abbott Field at Jim K Stadium. You see what looks like a warning track, and it's brown. It's not dirt, it's turf. Home plate is turf. Pitcher's mound is turf as well. One and two, two outs. Runners lead at second and first for the Tigers. A pitch. Oh, he had a good cut. That one's pop foul back and out of play. And next door here to my left, somebody broke their teeth on the countertop, probably tried to get under it over there a minute ago. Oh, one ball, two strikes. Boy, I tell you, this weekend it was all around us in the booth. I'm in the far box closest to the Gamecock dugout, first base side. Thought I had a couple of chances coming at me this weekend, but fortunately the screen ended up knocking them down. One-two pitch, swung and missed, strike three, got him, and the inning is over. So a couple of hits for the Tigers in a walk, but they can't cash in on the opportunity. Jones pitches out of trouble. No runs, two hits, and the Tigers strand two. Nothing for Auburn in the first. Jacksonville State coming to bat. Check out this verbo. Oh, no. Look at me. Let's say you win the first game of your parlay and you're not sure about bet number two. Hey, come on. Don't just watch all the NBA playoff action. Be a part of it with FanDuel. Lucky for me, there's some great golf here in the Carolinas. Whether you golf or not, Geico could help you score. <laughs> Ooh, if you'll get your winnings as soon as the buzzer sounds. Make every playoff moment more with FanDuel Sportsbook. Right now, new customers get a risk-free first bet up to 1000 bucks. Download FanDuel today. We love our new apartment. There's too much pressure in the bathroom. Good luck with the future in-laws tonight. Don't overthink it. But don't underthink it. At least Geico makes bundling our renters and car insurance easy. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, boy. For bundling made easy, go to geico.com. Phillies, Mets, division rivals aim to make a statement on Sunday Night Baseball. Alabama Power is a proud supporter of football across the state. Power for a better Alabama. Smiling. Hit the right button here. Mason Barnett getting ready to go to work for the Tigers. 
Barnett in his 13th appearance of the year. He's made 12 prior to tonight, obviously. Seven of those as a starter, and those have been midweek starts. A guy that they thought might be in the weekend rotation at one time. So 12 appearances this year, seven starts. His record, two wins, a loss, and an ERA at 4.29. In his 12 outings, he's worked 35 and two-thirds innings, given up 33 hits, 18 runs, 17 of those earned. Boy, good strikeouts to walks ratio. 45 strikeouts to just 16 walks so far. And opponents hitting just 248 against him. He did not pitch against Jacksonville State in the matchup back on March the 29th. Leading off the bottom of the first inning for Jacksonville State, the left fielder, number 21. Jordan Armstrong started that game for the Tigers and went the first three innings. By the way, Jones, who started tonight for the Gamecocks, did not face the Tigers first time around. Mason Mainers, who didn't play the first go-round against Auburn this season, leads it off. Left-handed hitter, Vestavia Hills product. First pitch, slide down the left side, but foul and out of play. He falls behind at a strike. Well, he's been good lately. He has had a good run for the last two weeks or so. His average up to 311. No homers, 11 runs, batted in. Mainers, sophomore, 6'1", 185 out of Vestavia. The 0-1 pitch. Fastball right through there. Nothing in two, the count. No balls, two strikes to count on him. Barnett, the sign, winds and deals, and that hit him. That got that right arm. I'm surprised that from up here, I thought maybe he got that arm out there a little bit trying to get hit. Sonny DeShera laughing when he comes down to first. I'm, everybody knows Sonny now. Butch Thompson is out of the dugout. Let's get another replay here up top. Well, maybe he didn't get the elbow. He just had that elbow out front anyway, and it got him on that elbow guard. Butch Thompson, it took a moment, but he did come out of the dugout. He's talking to the home plate umpire. Now he's going to call his crewmates over to visit with him. I thought initially maybe he did, but looking at the replay, it didn't look like he made a move to, to get hit by the pitch. So he stays there. The three umps get together and meet. That time, the replay proved him right. So Mainers aboard at first base. Just had that elbow really right there at the front of the zone. Mainers is on base for the 17th straight game. That's the longest streak for one of the game Cox this season. 17 in a row now in which he's reached. He's at first with nobody out for Cole Frederick. Pitch to Freddie. Fastball outside corner to the Tuscaloosa native. That one at 94. Nothing in one. The kill. Frederick on the season at 253 with a couple of homers. 12 runs batted in. The 0 1 pitch. Breaking ball. That's hit into the gap in right center field. Nobody got to catch that ball. It'll one hop and go over the fence. And that's a bad break for Jacksonville State because Mason Mainers probably would have scored from first base. He can run, Ken Mainers, and probably would have scored had the ball not hit the turf and bounced over the fence just to the left of the 380 mark. And it bounces between the video board and the 380 mark on the right center field fence out there. So Freddie's at second. Frederick with his team best 13th double of the season for Jacksonville State. So the game got something brewing against Barnett. Two on and nobody out. And here is T.J. Reeves. Frederick, nine straight games in which he's reached base safely. First pitch to T.J. Fastball. Swing and a miss. Nothing in one. The count. Reeves, the transfer from Tuscaloosa. Has been very, very good. Leading hitter for Jacksonville State. He's hitting 368 coming in. Five home runs. 22 runs batted in. Bad pitch. Another fastball. On the outside corner, nothing in two, the kill. No balls, two strikes, the kill. Mainers at third, Frederick down at second. Reeves leading the team, not only in batting average, but runs, scored, hits, total bases, slugging percentage, stolen bases, and being hit by pitches. But he's going here on three. Chase one up right around the letters, maybe a little above the letters, and might have been off the plate. We're going to miss for strike three. So TJ's out of there, they one down. The yep, right at right the letters. And it might have been Alex just off the plate. One down, here's Kerrigan. 
The game guy catcher at 252, couple of homers, 20 runs, batted in with the Murfreesboro, Tennessee native. A hit in the last game. He had, had a rough weekend to that point. They start him with a breaking ball. Came over the top. Right over the top with it. Did Barnett dropped it down? Alex a swing and a miss. In his career against the Tigers, Kerrigan had one out of six as he stands in there. Down and count. Got a strike here. The 0 1 pitch line foul back and out of play. Nothing into the count. Auburn defensively in the matchup this evening. Bobby Pierce in right field. Cason Howell in center. Brooks Carlson in left field. You got Sonny Desheras at first base. Cole Foster, the Tigers' second baseman. Blake Rambush works at third. The shortstop, Brody Moore. And behind the plate, Nate LaRue and Barnett on the mound for them. The 0-2 pitch. Steve Reich, three call. Fastball outside corner. That one at 91. Two down. Two on. And scoring position with nobody out, and they're still there. With two outs, back-to-back -back case. Right Perfect three. location. He hit the mitt where LaRue Bravo. set it up there. Fastball over the out, out, outside corner. Two down. Here's Carson Crow. His average at 230 for the season. Crow leads Jacksonville State at seven home runs for the year. 31 runs batted in for Carson. Slam over the weekend in the series. Against Lipscomb, foul that one back. Fastball at 89. Pro against Auburn. Four for 11 with a couple of doubles, three runs batted in. He had one of those doubles and two of the three runs batted in against the Tigers. March the 29th in the Gamecock win at Plainsman Park. Well, what a job here by Barnett. Gets out of this. Out of Cartersville, Georgia. Former Purple Hurricane from Cartersville High School. The 0-1 change sails outside. A ball, a strike to kill. Barnett, 6 feet, 218-pounder, junior right-hander. As I mentioned earlier, thought a guy that thought he was a guy might end up in their starting rotation in the weekend for them. Weekend rotation. Last year went 2-4 and four with 16 appearances total, 6 starts. The 1-1 pitch just off the corner. Crow took it low, just outside. Two balls and a strike to kill. Worked against Jacksonville State one inning in a game last year, April the 21st for the Tigers. Two balls and a strike. The pitch from Barnett to Crow. Good breaking ball. Came over the top. Swing and a miss by Carson Crow. Two balls, two strikes to kill. He and Trevor Lawrence from the same high school, Cartersville, Georgia. The number nine rated right-handed pitcher coming out of high school in Georgia following his senior year of high school at Cartersville. 2-2 two -two change, swung and missed strike three. Ball dropped, but LaRue will pick it up and throw to first to complete the strike. Yeah, a hit batsman and a double, and it looked like something hot and heavy was going for Jacksonville State, then he strikes out the side. No runs, the hit, two runners left for Jacksonville State. So both pitchers pitch around problems in the first inning. One complete. No score. Auburn in Jacksonville State here at Jim K Stadium. Is it worth it? Let's say you win the first game of your parlay. I don't know. Is it worth finding what you're capable of? Exploring your passion? Discovering your full potential? Yeah, it's an investment. An investment in you. So what do you think? Are you worth it? I feel blessed to do what I do for a living. Our job is to keep the lights on. You depend on us for that. The work isn't glamorous. When the weather gets bad, some days are tough. But we take pride in making sure your power works when you flip the switch. We take pride in being reliable at a time when few things are. That's our job, and we're grateful that you trust us to serve you. Comfortable at bat, and freed off to a good start. Two up, two down in the first inning.
pitching change for Jacksonville State. Dylan Hancock is on the hill probably, based on my conversation with Jim Case earlier today, probably will work two innings. Will, the Gamecock senior left-hander out of Tallahassee, Alabama, on the season at Cock. One win, four losses, 6.09 ERA, 17 appearances. One of those was a midweek start. 34 innings of work, 41 hits, 27 runs, 23 of them earned. He struck out 28, walked to seven in 34 innings, but opponents hit 304 against him. He worked against the Tigers in the game this year, worked one inning down at Plainsman Park. No runs, two hits, and a strikeout. First pitch, that breaking ball kept on bending and inside. Almost. Hit Bobby Pierce, the right fielder, as he leads it off. It's down and in, ball one. Fastball at 86, outside, 2-0, oh, the count now. Pierce in right field for the Tigers. The red shirt junior from Scottsdale, Arizona. He takes that one off the plate, 3-0, and oh, the count. Pierce on the year at 323, a couple of homers and 10 runs, batted in for him. The 3-0 -oh pitch out of the zone. So a four-pitch walk to start the Auburn half of the second inning. Second walk for the Gamecock pitchers. Pierce did not play against Jacksonville State the first go-round. Gamecocks walked only three in the game the first time. In the first meeting, and already two here. First pitch is Hathcock high, ball one. Brody Moore. Short stop from Aniana, senior, 5'11", 183-pounder, his dad, a former Tiger, wearing his dad's old number as well. That pitch backdoored and a strike on the outside corner. One didn't win the count. Hathcock, the lefty, throwing to the right-hander. And handed hitters for the year, hitting 308 against Hathcock. Fastball, a little high, bumped him off the plate. Two balls, a strike to kill. The infield, no shift, but T.J. Reeves in center, around toward right center for Moore. And he took a shot to right and hit it just foul down the right field line. Ball kicked around down there off the indoor facility and back out toward fair territory. Throw down here to get it. Pitchers out of the dugout to retrieve it. Two balls, two strikes, a count on Moore. Runner leads it first. The pitch hit hard, but foul outside of third. He was out in front of that breaking ball. He was waiting on it, sitting on it, out it. Was out in front just a bit. Dad, Brandon Moore, was an all-SEC player at Auburn from 91 to 94. 2-2 pitch. Check swing, tapped it foul behind the plate. 